All right, everyone. Thanks so much for joining me this week. You know, <laughs> I don't know about you, but how many emails, how many Instagram pings have you received or, or on LinkedIn or Facebook too, for that matter, with um, all of these, you know, uh, the internet gurus out there are saying that they can, you know, 10x, 100x your leads and 30 minutes. And if you just buy this one program and do this one thing, you know, you will, will make all of your dreams come true when it comes to more leads, you know, in your pipeline. I can honestly say that I'm going to raise my hand on this one. I, I have bought into that, some of that stuff before in the past. And I was rudely, <laughs> rudely awakened to the fact that like none of it worked. Okay, because this promise of all of these, you know, just millions of clients coming to your doorway, you know, with little to no effort, it doesn't work like that. It just doesn't. There is no silver bullet when it comes to recruiting clients, the right clients to your pipeline. And here's the thing, for some of you who have bought um, followers on Instagram or whatnot, oh my goodness, not good. Um, that will definitely screw up with the algorithm. And that's not a good metric that you need to be looking at because are those people who are actually gonna buy your product or service? You have to be mindful about these things, okay? Buying followers is not going to do it for you. I can assure you of that. In fact, I've worked with a client recently who bought 10,000 followers to beef up her Instagram page and is now regretting the fact that she did all of that because, um, you know, first of all, it doesn't set well with the algorithm, you know, first of all. And secondly, like none of those followers are her ideal client. So it's like the only reason why she did it was just to have that vanity metric of 10,000 plus followers, but no one's hitting the buy button. Y'all, this is not worth the time, effort, energy, or money. Okay. So when it comes to cultivating leads and putting, getting those clients in your client pipeline, it's going to take some effort on your part. It just will. And either you're going to have to pay for ads. And by the way, ads are freaking expensive online and in the face-to-face -face world. If you buy an ad in the luxury magazine, it's going to cost you a minimum of $15,000 a year, if not more. If you buy ads on Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, guess what? Get ready to spend a good two to $3,000 a month if you want to see any type of return on investment there. It ain't cheap is all I'm trying to say. So for those of you who are like me, who are really wanting to grow more organically and want to get in front of the right people that really make sense for us, that really align to our values, there's, it's going to take some work. Okay. So again, there is no, you know, there's, there's no magic pixie dust. that's going to bring you these people without any work on your end. And if you do want more clients, you've got to get out there and you have to be visible to them. And that's going to take y'all. It's going to take consistency and intentionality every day of the week to get in front of those right people. So there are two platforms to generate leads. And this is what we're gonna be diving into today. There's the in-person kind and then the digital kind, right? So the in-person lead generation activities that we do are attending those chamber and nonprofit events, meetings with client prospects, conferences, masterminds that we go to. Think about those in-person type of group events that we can go to to get in front of the people that we want to work with. Think about professional workshops and trade shows where it's likely that your perfect client will be attending. Try to be a featured as a keynote speaker. Try to get on podcasts that your perfect client is listening to. Those kinds of things, not only do they increase your credibility and your authority in your space, but let's be honest, we all want to see the people that we want to work with, right? We do. We do. And so when you take advantage of those opportunities, especially now that the world is opening up more and we can do these in-person events, you know, and here's the thing, an in-person event doesn't necessarily have to mean something, you know, in person over coffee or cocktail or whatever like that. That could be, hey, I mean, I've reached out to plenty of people via text messages saying, hey, can we hop on Zoom? And, you know, I really like what you're doing on X, Y, and Z. And I think maybe we could collaborate together, whatever the case may be. And let's just hop on a 30 minute Zoom call 
and see if this might be a good fit for the both of us. I mean, you'd be surprised y'all people want to connect. We all have a human desire to connect. And so, you know, reaching out that way through quote unquote in-person uh, ways, even though yes, you're meeting on zoom, it's still a one-on-one -on -one experience and, and it's, it's worth looking into and worth, worth looking at for your business. Um, one thing that I do with my clients, especially my private clients who, um, we spend a lot of time talking through what podcasts and, you know, credibility building, um, activities that they could be involved in and in-person events and that kind of thing is I ask them to put together their top 10 list of who are those people that they want to be in front of either for collaboration purposes, you know, they have like kind audiences or people that they want to work with. I need for you to actually physically write down the names of those top 10 people and, and have, have that be kind of your North star, if you will, of how you should be reaching, who the people you should be reaching out to. Okay you have to have a list and a prospect list. And, and I just start with my top 10. Who are the top 10 people that you want to work with and start reaching out to them? That could, you, you may already know who they are. You may already be in certain committee meetings with them or, you know, your paths have crossed before something like that. Then even better, you know, picking up the phone, calling, texting, DMing, whatever your primary source of reaching out would be, reach out to them and, and get in front of them. Okay. All they can do is say no. All they can do is say no. You know, it's so interesting. You know, speaking of saying no, I was listening to a podcast recently and the host was talking about the sliding door um, movie uh, that Gwyneth Paltrow starred in. I think it was in the 90s. And, you know, the movie is about Gwyneth Paltrow. It's been forever since I've seen it, but just bear with me here, okay? But Gwyneth Paltrow gets on a subway train in New York City and the doors open, you know, the sliding glass doors open. And the train takes her in one direction and the movie shows her in her life going in that one direction, you know, based on how she got onto the subway. Then it, towards the end of the movie, it shows her like a flashback. It shows her getting onto a different subway train going a different direction. And it's just so fascinating for me to see that, I mean, the trajectory that your life can take, depending on what door you decide to go into, I mean, it will take you down a completely different path and journey. And that is not such a bad thing, especially when you're trying to grow your business. So sometimes you have to walk into one of those sliding glass doors, not knowing specifically what the outcome is going to be, but that it's going to take you somewhere. And it's all part of the journey. And if that door doesn't work for you, then hop onto the next one and find another door that's open, right? But the minute that we start telling ourselves that we can't contact these people or these people that we'd love to work with, yeah, they would never work with us. We're, you know, we're putting into place those quote unquote limiting beliefs. You know, I hate to use buzzwords, but it is, but you're putting those limiting beliefs into effect that aren't necessarily true. So that all being said, make your top 10 list. Okay. Make your top 10 list. Who are the people that you really want to work with? And you need to be reaching out to those folks, plain and simple. Okay. The other type of lead generation that we're going to talk about is digital lead generation. Okay. And there's four key components that I want you to think about when it comes to digital lead generation. Number one, we need to make sure that your email signature block tells people who you are, what you do, and a link to your website or your freebie opt-in that you have, okay? So name, business, and a link to your website or freebie opt-in. Now, I really, really promote people to use their website on this because we want to generate traffic to your website and we need to have your website out there as much as possible, okay? So the other piece of this is, number two is email marketing. If you do have an email list, you should be marketing to that list, that list regularly, at least weekly, at twice a month at the very least, but you need to be nurturing that list so they see your name in front of them on the regular, okay? So your email signature, email marketing, social media, Okay, this is number three for you. I want you to pick just one platform that you feel confident you can be consistent on and connect with potential clients and, and engage with them on that platform. Okay, for me, that's going to be Instagram and LinkedIn. I'm not on Facebook as much. Um, I, I hop on Facebook two or three times a week, but really Instagram and LinkedIn is where I hang out the most. So those are the platforms that I feel um, that I can be consistent with on. And those are the platforms that I can engage with potential clients as well, too. And 
when I talk about engaging, I'm talking about commenting on other people's posts, um, direct messaging people if I feel like it's pertinent and necessary. You know, something really struck me and I want to let them know. I will send them a DM, that kind of a deal. Okay, but just click one platform. Pick one. And why do I say just one? Well, let me tell you, when you're first starting out and, you know, establishing a digital footprint for your business and that kind of thing, and say you're a small business owner, you're a solo, or you've got a very, very small shop of people that work for you, um, we can't be everywhere all the time. And so consistency is king, right? And you cannot be consistent if you're on six different platforms trying to figure out content every single day. Like it doesn't work that way. Okay. So I just want you to pick one, get consistent with that, and then add another one. Once you feel like you've got some good consistency, um, you know, flowing on that particular platform, but just pick one to get started. Now, the fourth thing is your social media bio. This is very similar to your email signature block. It needs to tell people who you are, what you do, and include a link to your website or the freebie yet again, okay? If your social media bio does not have that link to your website or your freebie, you're missing out on cash and clients, period, end of story, you've got to have it. Okay. So make sure that your email signature block tells people who you are, what you do, and a link to your website. Your social media bio needs to tell the same thing. As far as email marketing, if you have that email list, you should be marketing to them um, regularly, weekly, bi-monthly at the very minimum. If you don't have an email list, well, my golly, we need to talk about that. And you need to click the link in my bio and we need to schedule a messaging and marketing strategy call. You'll take the DISC assessment. We'll figure out what is your best communication style and how will you best communicate to your perfect client. And we will develop a freebie that will be best for you. Okay. Cause you need to have some sort of lead magnet out there into the world to where people can get to know, like, and trust you a little bit better in the digital space. Okay. And then on social media, you need to pick that one platform that you feel confident that you can be consistent on connect with your potential clients. Those are the things that you need to be doing in the digital space. And remember in the in-person lead generation space, you need to be thinking about your top 10 list and figuring out what those events, meetings, um, conferences, masterminds, workshops, trade shows, whatever the thing might be that you could be consistent with attending, what are they? Get them on your calendar. All right. And that is what you need to do to be helping yourself when it comes to lead generation on a consistent, regular basis in both the in-person and digital space. If you found this information helpful, please, please, please share it with somebody else that you think would derive some benefit from it. And until next time, I will see you on the podcast.